Um, but, yeah, uh, you used to send me some crazy emails I might have blocked you, I don't remember, but, um... I mean, if that's true, you should make a video about it and clear your name, but, um, I mean, you were... You lost in a court of law, like, under the justice system, so I don't know what I'm really supposed to say unless you now win in a court of law against the justice system, and if you do that, then I'll make a video talking about it. Are you, are you filing your appeal to the court of Turkey Tom? <laughs> no, I was asking about the emails. <laughs> Steve, like... The futuristic hub Steve is in waiting to call right now. I don't oh. think it's real, but are you talking about, you talking about uh, Brian's brother? Yeah. Wait, the weatherman? The the weatherman. Yeah. The weatherman. Can we take the weatherman in? How's the weather? What? <laughs> How's weather. the weather? How's the weather? <laughs> weather. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? No, this is not the weatherman. This is Brian. Oh, okay. What do you want to talk about, Brian? So I saw your video. A friend of mine pointed it out to me. When are you gonna start telling the truth about the whole $20 million lawsuit? Just just a question. What do you mean by telling the truth? So I've emailed you uh, my lawyer's motions on fraud on the court that prove that the 2016 case was frauded and the court, the entire case was frauded and that those judgments are going to be vacated off of me. Okay, so you, and you, so still you, emailed, me, that. you emailed me a motion yeah. that your lawyer filed? Yes. So was anything like proven in a court of law as far as the case being like fraudulent? Uh, well, my lawyer cited the uh, in the motion on the fraud in the court why in 2014 when they filed it that I had no idea the case was going on until 2016 was a fraud in the court. Uh, I've sent emails letting you know about what was going on. That explains why I am the way I am when it comes to this type of stuff. It's it's it should be in your email, but I guess you might have blocked it or something. Um, but, yeah, you uh, used to send me some crazy emails I might have blocked you, I don't remember, but, um, I mean, if that's true, you should make a video about it and clear your name, but, um, I mean, you were, you lost in a court of law, like, under the justice system, so I don't know what I'm really supposed to say unless you now win in a court of law against the justice system, and if you do that, then I'll make a video talking about it. Are you, are you filing your appeal to the court of Turkey Tom? <laughs> no, I was asking about the emails, because I saw the recent video, right, the, the, the two days ago, and I was hoping that he would have at least said something on the lines that uh, I filed my motions, and they're sitting in federal court right now, um, which, you know, the, the, in the motions, there's tons of evidence to prove that the court was, was frauded. I, I guess in a, in a summary, let me tell you what happened. 2014, uh, Marco Princep, he hired a lawyer named Robert Wilson. That was his lawyer. And in 2015, I was added to the, to the lawsuit by the plaintiffs and the Robert Robert Wilson, which is Marco's lawyer, told uh, told Marco, hey, listen, uh, if I'm going to represent Brian, then I'm going to need some money for that. And behind my back, uh, he was paid about, I think is like five or 10 grand to represent me without even knowing it. And so Robert Wilson actually went to the court and said, hey, send the summons over Brian's summons to my office, which this is all in, in the motions and the evidence, to my office because I'm going to be representing Brian. So this this happened in May of 2015. And so from May of 2015 all the way to March of 2016, Robert Wilson was falsely representing me, uh, keeping me out of mediation, keeping me out of settlement talks, making answers on my behalf, which is a direct violation of my due process rights you know, from the Constitution of the United States. And that's where the issue is. So Marco and his lawyer in, in March of 2016 contacted me and said, hey, uh, show up to court as a witness so we can protect the video games YouTube channel. Because at the time I was running the channel and I own 50% of it. And uh, so I ended up showing to court and I didn't have my court clothes on or anything. Uh, and I showed up to court leading to believe that I was going to be a witness. And it turned out that I was getting these, you know, uh, questions asked of me. And then when they said, and, and, and you've been sued, and in the court, I said, no, I haven't been sued. I don't know what you're talking about right in front of a jury. Uh, and it turned out I look like a complete idiot in front of everybody. So why um, is, um, can I just ask you a question? Um, yeah. Why is all this like being brought up now? Because I've never heard this from you. The most that I've heard is like you saying you didn't own the Futuristic Hub channel you going to England. Um, I mean, there's a lot of crazy calls between you and Brandon that Tommy C has shown. Um, there's, you know, stuff like that. Um, there's a whole thing with your wife, Holly. 
uh, claiming that she actually was running the channels the whole time, which I, I don't believe. Um, how come none of that was, how come everything you're saying now, I've, I've never heard it. Was this in the entire court case or is this only being brought up now that you've lost or like what's what's the deal? So here, here's what happened. It was in uh, September 2020, the plaintiffs filed a, a collections lawsuit against Holly for the YouTube channels uh, and then added me to the lawsuit against the YouTube channels. So we were fighting that lawsuit from 2020 until trial, which was April of 2022. And then from April of 2022, when uh, Holly and I lost that lawsuit, um, what happened was they brought the collections to England Mm -hmm. And all of that came out in discovery. So I contacted Robert Wilson and I said, hey, could you tell the English courts what happened and how did this judgment of 2016 came to be? Because they had a provision in there in the English courts that if a judgment was procured by fraud and substantial against natural justice, that it wouldn't be allowed to be registered as a foreign judgment in England. So when I contacted Robert Wilson, he emailed me and agreed uh, obviously because of, you know, statute of limitations in America and too much time has passed, he agreed that he would talk to my uh, attorney uh, solicitor in England and get a witness statement signed and done stating exactly what it was. And inside the witness statement, that's all in the motions. It literally says at no point did he ever take instructions from me and all the things that he did in the lawsuit was instructed by Marco Princep alone. And so we we got that in in um, June of 2022. We got we got that uh, witness statement. And so right there we had I had more evidence. I didn't know that it was actually that type of fraud. I knew that nobody was telling me about the lawsuit. I thought it was Marco who kept me away from it, and I didn't know what was going on. Okay. Can so I, when can I, I saw can that, because my original question is, yeah. if if all of this is real, why have you never talked yeah. about any of what you're saying right now? Like I never heard any of this. All I've heard uh, is like I don't own the channel. I never owned it. Holly ran it the whole time, and you, know, you were kind of like dodging assets. You left to England. Um, there were a few times. I mean, I've shown in, you know, I've made, I think, three, two videos mainly about you at this point, and then I had the more recent one that was kind of a recap. Um, everything in those videos, to my knowledge, you've never really responded to or debunked any of it. So I guess my main concern is just like, why have you not responded to that? And why are you not like, if, if what you're saying is true, why haven't you made like a video or I don't know, some kind of document manifesto debunking it all and showing the world that you were right the whole time? Uh, well, you know, it's because we're still waiting for the appeal opinion to come back. Uh, everything that I've said, everything that Holly said, we've all got that in the, the trial. And uh, on our side, we're sticking with our side. And then the other side, they're sticking with their side. But we're really confident that we're going to win the appeal. Should we win? the appeal, then I'll have no problem having that document and that judgment showing that, hey, we were right the whole time, we won the appeal, um, and do it that way. But, you know, the process takes forever. We had the uh, the argument for that appeal was in November of last year, and we're still waiting for that opinion. I mean, if I come out now and say it, obviously, nobody's, you know, it's going to be 50-50. I see people believing uh, me. I see people not believing me. I see I've people believing no Holly. Oh no, there there are people. I mean, there the the actual fans. There's a lot of them Your too. There's a children. lot of fans out there. No, there there's a lot of of older fans. I mean, no, I've I've not. seen quite a bit of older fans. But regardless, they're exposed to this type of drama. They they I mean they're they're clearly understanding that. Okay, well, it it could be right or it could be wrong. But it's it's there's no use talking about it. I mean, I could say right now that I'm not the owner, and people will go, oh, "You're a liar." I can say I'm the co-founder because I am. I mean, sure, I can be a co-founder. I did a lot on that channel. Uh, but Holly did too as well. She was there and she was making videos too. And there wasn't was videos like to a, prove. Wasn't she like a child when she would have been doing that? Yeah, so, yeah, that's, so yeah, so that's what I what I wanted to, to bring out. When I was working on the video games channel, and, and I think a lot of people do know this, I had to recruit, uh, you know, content creators. And a lot of these content creators were teenagers you know 15 years old 16 years old 13 14 whatever but that's kind of how the demographic is on online and so when i was when i was deep into the video games channel and i was doing recruits then yeah of course i'm going to be talking you know to people like that but as as far as what you said i noticed that what you so, said about the whole holly situation okay, so if you're if you if you've hired a bunch of teenagers right. To help you make your videos right like i have people who help me make my videos they're not teenagers they're okay. adults 
but I would still say that it's my channel. It's I'm the founder. I am the founder. Like Holly was, how old? How old do you claim Holly was when she started helping you out? Thirteen. Okay. Do you think it's realistic that anybody in a quarter outside would assume that you co-own a YouTube channel with a thirteen-year-old when you're the one like directing and instructing everything? You have got a ton of videos on YouTube of you saying I'm Futuristic Hub. I'm the owner of Futuristic Hub. This is my channel. And then all of a sudden, it's like Holly. Well, the thing is, I never said I was the owner of Futuristic Hub. I mean, people called me Futuristic Hub because my voice was, you know, undoubtedly the voice of the channel. And so my voice is the one that's actually the one that people think about when they think about the, the channel itself. So that's why I'm saying if I say I am Futuristic Hub, OK, that's fine. You can call me Futuristic Hub. But as far as the legalities of it, ownership, I think you're you're able to own a YouTube channel when you're what, 12? I think it's the age of 12, right, on on YouTube. So, and there's a lot of young people, especially artists, who are 12, 13, 14, 15, who are animators, and it is believable that they can make these type of videos. To be honest with you, I, I, I just think you're full of I, I think you made well, the wait, but, channel. But Futuristic Hub, whose name is on the partner agreement? Like, who's, whose AdSense account gets charged? So as far as as far as the partner, there was no partnership agreement, and I and I you know what it's the same thing that when I was partnering with Top Trends. I think you know who Cameron is for Top Trends. Mm -hmm. We we had we didn't have a partnership agreement, but we were working together uh, on it. What it do was you like think a 50 about um, type thing. about what your wife said about you making weird comments to um, Holly when she was 11 years old? What do you think about that? I think she was she was. Uh, coerced into saying that because what she was saying was a, a complete lie it goes against the evidence she says that i met her what when i met holly at age 10 but now the court records say it was 13 so again we have to go by what the record says so 13. if the, even she even only, if she's 13 like what would you say in response to her saying you made weird comments to her when she was 13 right yeah but there was no weird comments though the only thing that i've said to holly was she's really good at what she does and i'd like to work with her at no point i mean what what kind of comments are we talking about because i did see my ex-wife say that but she didn't point out or even have any proof right. of what it was that i would have said but i did meet my ex-wife uh chrissy uh i met her in 2010 online and on youtube and that's actually how i met her Okay. So, so so maybe I mean, I mean it's possible that um your ex wife lied. I mean that's you know, I don't know. Who knows? I wasn't there. Well she doesn't um, like yeah, she of course she lied. She doesn't like me, she hates me, she hates the idea that and and you know, again, I didn't divorce her, she divorced me. I know there's a lot of people saying that I quickly divorced my ex wife and then married Holly. That's that's not what happened. She left me. What do you think so, about um because some people would probably say it's weird that you uh, like, how old were you when you met Holly? Because you, you had a professional relationship before a personal one, right? You know how old you were at the time? Oh, God, I don't even know. I, I'm trying to do my math right now. Uh, 30-something. You're 40 now, right? No. <laughs> no, I'm not 40. Uh, 39. Okay, so you might have been late 20s? Yeah, I think that sounds about right. So a lot of people would say that it's weird that you were... Um, let's, say you, let's say you personally draw a distinction between... There was this professional relationship, and then at some point it becomes a personal relationship. A lot of people would call it uh, grooming, I think, when they hear that you met this girl when she was 10 or 13 years old, and you were in your you know mid to late 20s. You start working together, you're paying her for things, and then at some point, um, you know, you develop an actual relationship and you get married to her. A lot of people would connect the dots and say something weird is going on there, right? Well, no, I mean, it, when when we were working together on the Minecraft animations, that's just specifically what it was. And at points, she wanted to be my friend, even when she was 16. And I told her, no, I can't, I, I can't be your friend. I can't talk to you like that. You know, it's strictly professional. Uh, but then at the time where she was around 18 or 19, we started talking more and, and we started becoming more, you know, f friendly. Uh, and then after that, uh, I got into divorce, obviously, and uh, I met her. And of course, of course, I was, you know, old enough, and she was old enough. I mean, you can call me a, a, a YouTube version of Leonardo DiCaprio all you want. I mean, I really don't care. Um, but it is, it is what it is. It happened. It's not like I did anything illegal. I mean, she's 18. I'm of age. I'm allowed to do that. I don't see a problem with that. And uh, let's 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 just be honest here. Is Nobody knows my mental diagnosis, and I can say 
right now what my mental diagnosis is. I had a mental diagnosis of last year. I have autism. I'm an autistic male. And so I, I can't function uh, in, in social socialness at times. And there are things that I can't function on. So, you know, I'm not a normal uh, neurotypical type of guy. And I think people should should treat that, you know, with more respect. They They assume too much of me. They think that I'm just some normal person or they think that anybody that they don't know is supposed to be normal. But right. you know, but you, you have know, like not. a buddy, a buddy of mine is going through something like that right now. Are you familiar with um, Tipster? Yeah, he lives right down the street from me. Really? Wow. Um, so, do you have like an opinion on him in general? I, just, I was interested to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Matthews. He just gets in himself in a, in a lot of drama. I know we had some, you know, issue in the past, but it, it didn't last very long. Uh, as You're far raising as, a point. As he does get himself in a lot of drama. It's, but yeah. he actually, he also yeah. actually, um, you may not know this, he actually has autism. He got diagnosed recently. So I feel like we should give him a little bit of leeway, realistically. You know, he doesn't really understand a lot of social situations. I think he tweeted I mean, about that like a month ago, right? Yeah. That yeah. was, yeah. yeah. Put things in perspective a little yeah, bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. I mean, I, I try not to judge people like that. I mean, I, I've been working on my attitude. I think there's a lot of talk where I've, lost my temper and yeah sure i've lost my temper because of, of the stuff that i've been through and i i'm trying to cope with it believe me i am i mean i think i think it's sensible to say that if you were royally screwed in a 20 million dollar judgment when you didn't see it coming you'd be but angry, you knew yeah. that there was, i mean I yeah so. You, yeah so that's why the, and I'm still the death that stuff, i guess years. right only to the plaintiffs, I will be honest like i i don't care whether they live or die because of what they've done i just I just don't care because they attack my mom. I don't know if you guys know they're not, but they actually sued. They sued my mother. Oh, they wow. literally sued my mother. Well, because my mother bought a house for Holly uh, it, with uh, with settlement money that she received, and they end up getting this court to say that that money was my money the whole time. And when she bought the house, so how do you uh, um how do you get a court to say that? Like to prove that? Wouldn't they have to show like financial records to show that that's where the money came from? Uh, they they have a a corrupt judge. Oh, I see. Uh, judge Judge Hoffman of the 68th District Court is absolutely corrupt, and I'll t and I'll tell you how how I know this. First of all, the all right. plaintiff's lawyers is a Texas senator, a Democratic Texas senator. That's number one. The number plaintiff's two, lawyer is a Democratic Texas senator. Okay. Yeah, Texas Senator Royce West. Okay. And wait, but that how does that make him corrupt? Well, he's Just not done explaining. Let him, let him. No, no, let him explain. Well, he's not done. Judge Hoff, Judge Hoffman of the 68th District Court is also a Democrat, and he gets donations from the plaintiffs' lawyers. Okay. He put two and two together. That I mean, in state court, that you're you're bound to run into that. Federal court, it's it's an iffy thing, and appeals court, it's not so political. Um, have you brought this up anywhere? Court, like, have you told um like maybe I don't know the president or something like that? I feel like he would be able to do something about it. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I would love to reach out to the president or something like that, but I'm actually working with some other organizations on the whole 2016 thing. I'm going to try to work my way from the outside in and then and do it that way. Right. Because I don't want to just I don't want to go and attack this you know, attack a judge over something that that should be taken delicately. Right. Um, but so I want to start by showing where the fraud started in the first place just just and a then, quick side note in case um just so you know so i know we we're not really on good terms with tipster we've had a lot of beef um i am understanding of him because he has autism but uh you may not know this but tipster's aunt um actually at one point worked for joe biden's campaign um not recently way back in the day when he was running for vp um so i think i think to this day tipster's aunt has the email if you show some goodwill to tipster he may be willing to give you that email and you know you could probably get it kind of you know up the chain a little bit faster um maybe worth your time but sorry go on you're good oh cool uh thanks for the tip stir no no <laughs> worries you're welcome for the tip stir yeah that sounds that sounds cool i mean I, i'm i've got organizations and news people actually reached out to me last week because uh there was some development in my uh fraud on the court lawsuit the magistrate did put out her opinion stating that she thinks that my motion should be denied but she failed to give reasons for it, and she totally ignored my constitutional rights. It does say that if an officer of the court does make uh, – well, withhold your summons, that's number one, and then it makes filings in the court uh, that – you know, fraudulent filings with the court, 
then that constitutes as a fraud on the court. Well, it didn't it didn't show that. So I'm filing right. my objections on Monday or Tuesday uh, on that. But I do have like a, a Dallas Fort Worth, uh, they're at Fox, ABC, CBS. They've reached out to me, uh, wanted to do a story next week uh, because the court case was filed. Uh, my motion was filed in September of last year and just June 4th. Uh, we've got some movement going in and this way. And you know what's you know what's really funny, Tom? The plaintiffs did not respond to my motion. They had eight months. Really? And yeah, they they totally ignored it. And Brandon, uh, and I'll quote this, Brandon says, It's been ten years, dude. Give it a rest. Who cares? That's that's wow. that's exactly that's his pretty point. Disgusting. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, I yeah, it is. This, considering yeah. Well, considering if you look at the evidence, it actually proves that Brandon was planning on frauding me. Really? From the start. Can you elaborate yeah, on that a little bit? Okay, Brandon and Marco, when they were getting into their partnership agreement in summer of 2014, uh, they had an, a written agreement where Marco was promising Brandon 30%, and Brandon would take 30% of the video games channel, and then at the end, it says, as long as you don't talk to Brian Martin. Right. And... There's signatures on those, and they left that out uh, in the 2016 lawsuit. That that document was uh, shown in evidence, but it was excluded. And I don't know how they excluded that because that was you would show a jury that that would have showed that Brandon Keating was planning on frauding the entire time. Yeah. And let's just say I I did get 50 percent of the video games channel for helping Marco get the channel back from it being hacked. It was right. a promise to me. So if I'm getting 50 percent of video games, I'm thinking, OK, great. I've got 50 percent of video games and there's nobody else. All of a sudden I find out, oh, wait a minute, there's two people who claim 30 percent each. That's 60 percent total. Well, well, you know, if I was going to get into a settlement agreement with them or if I had, you know, an opportunity to do this case. I would have looked at the, the facts, and if it was true that these two investors do own 60% collectively, and I had 50%, I would have gone to Marco, and I would have gone to these investors right. and say, you know what, Marco, you're the one that signed these contracts. I didn't sign them. So how about you go down to zero? Right. I'll give them 10, I'll give 10% of my 50%, and so I'll keep 40%. And then those two investors, I'll work with them on 30% each, and we'll be happy. I, I actually, but I, never, I, I didn't, I, I didn't know any of this because I, I talked to Brandon, thought he was a nice guy, but um, I know Brandon seems pretty dark right now, if you ask me. Just to follow this all up, I guess you know my perspective would be that if your motion to dismiss goes through, then I would be you know willing to make a video about it and tell your story about how you were wrong. You know, I have no no problem with correcting the record there if that's the case. I really appreciate that, Tom. I really do. No worries, buddy. You know what? Let bygones be bygones. It is what it is. I understand, you know. People, uh, you know, you get a little riled up in a situation, but, you know, if, if you're right, you're right. We'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah, you know, this whole thing is like, you know, I've been really wanting to get my story out there. I've been wanting to get a video out there, and I will do that eventually. I mean, maybe we can do one together or something. If, you know, the truth comes out and you start saying, hey, you know what? This, this guy was completely effed, I guess you can say. I won't say too much about it but you know i i literally was frauded by the justice system and and when it comes to the collections part of it they they actually did us real dirty here because so yes there's a a 20 million dollar judgment out there i'm only liable for about 11 million of it i guess a, a, around 11 or 12 million let's just say that the marco's the the rest of it yeah but regardless when they got the judgment on the futuristic hub case they argued that the videos and the channel and everything else was worth 13 or 14 million dollars mm -hmm. okay and so if they win a judgment in that case and they get the videos which that's what the judgment says don't you think my judgment is satisfied it is yeah, the whole yeah, thing would be sure. satisfied undoubtedly but you know now they're playing it funny because now they're saying oh no i'm sorry that 13 million is actually excluded from the 20 million it's just it's just we're just going to take the 13 million uh, of, of assets of what we think and we're still going to attack you on for the the 2016 judgment so that, that's kind of what the appeal is about on that side is first of all they didn't prove that the, the the videos were worth 13 million that's the number one thing number two one of the appeal judges was even saying okay well wait a minute this is a collections suit so you're you're trying to collect money from these youtube channels for your $20 million ticket. And, but so how does that work if you're going to be doing a collection suit and you've got these damages of 13 million 
and now you're saying that the judgments are now worth 34 million i mean it doesn't make any sense right and so yeah. what they did was they were using these back doors with this corrupt judge and honestly it's it and i and i hate talking down on judges i mean i i have Maybe a so. lot of respect for 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 the judges I, i've got a lot of respect for for <laughs> lawyers but when you're in a predicament like this it's like when when you're in something like this you just can't help but to to say that when you're when you're actually I mean, you're gonna get frustrated when, when the legal system is like this i mean we all know what the democratic party's been up to so it's not surprising that that was going on you know um honestly so oh well yeah raining illegals party, in yeah. over the borders right now <laughs> They are doing I, I mean, I don't, I don't have an opinion. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I can tell you right now. If you guys want to, uh, if you guys want something to do, okay, uh, go on Google and type in at real Donald Trump and futurist a cub, and you'll see my pal Donald Trump tweet uh, the futurist a cub out. Sure, I'll you can do it out. right now. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, thank you for calling in, Brian. I'm glad you got to share your story a little bit. Um, I appreciate you, Tom. I appreciate you, and thank you so much for uh, me share everything. And and I hope that this thing ends on a positive note. On 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 the on the end note, I saw the life and intent thing. Uh, yeah, not proud of that. I I uh, again, as you know, I'm I'm still learning. I think as I get older, I'm starting to try to understand the whole. Um, empathetic thing when it comes to you know autism. I can tell you right now, I. I acted a, a, a little too fast, and I wasn't really thinking about a lot of people's feelings when I was in my my teens. You mean like the when whole, I was a child, um, the whole like epic, epic, epic earthquake. earthquake. Yeah. yeah, thumbs up for epic earthquake. Yeah, that that was a troll. That was something that I I thought was funny at the time. I thought maybe it would get some views, but it 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 just wasn't what I expected. Uh, and uh, that was yeah, that was definitely my bad right there. But other than that, I'm still trying. I, uh, you know, with, when it comes to living with a $20 million judgment um, for eight years, it's difficult because when you have that much debt and you got these people that are going, doing some shady things. Look, I live in California now. Um, I've been living in California for a year. I actually signed up as a contractor for my brother's company. And my brother's an entrepreneur. He's a weatherman and he owns media businesses. And so I signed up as a contractor, the same Brandon that we're talking about, he filed an out of state garnishment in the same Texas court. And I can show you the motions there against my brother's company wow. telling the judge that that's my money. That's very and dark it, and of Brandon to do. Holy yeah. And, and so now Kevin's actually sued Brandon uh, in California court, Brandon and the, and the judgment creditors and JP Morgan Chase. Kevin's actually sued them in California, and they're dealing with with that right now. And he got a TRO, which the judge in California sided with Kevin and said, hey, wait a minute, you know, Brandon uh, and Chase, you guys can't do this because this is an out-of-state thing. Why would a How would a Texas judge uh, sign this order yeah. uh, from somebody who's not even you know, a resident I, of Texas? There's you know? a lot of that stuff going on. You know, my, my good friend Tumad was driving in Oregon, and they say that, you know, he's responsible for stuff in Los Angeles. But he was he was literally driving in Oregon the entire time, so I don't I don't understand how this can apply to California. He was placed in an entirely different state at the time of the issue. Yeah, he was literally driving in Oregon, so I, I don't even understand how they brought that to court. But Like, yeah. how could you, yeah. If you're driving well, wait, wait, in Oregon, okay. like how can you be brought to justice in Los a Los Angeles? Of course, like I, I just don't. He's not in Los Angeles. Yeah, he's in Oregon. Yeah, driving. he's in the grave. Yeah, no, he he would not have personal jurisdiction, so he would have to go to Oregon. That's they, what I was they saying. They should have done it in that's Oregon. What, that's what yeah. he said. Nobody listened. Wow. See, there you go. See, the courts are just you know by, sideways. But my my issue when it comes to the Texas court and this specific judge is exactly what I said. This judge is getting donations from. Senator Royce West and the West firm, which is uh, Brandon and the plaintiffs' uh, lawyers. That's how deep it goes. It, it does. It, it goes all the way to to the Texas senator being, you know, their lawyer with a state Democratic judge. It's it's um it's ridiculous. But you know, I'm gonna keep pushing through, and I encourage you to check your email, uh, Tom, if you want to, if you're interested in in reading up on some of those motions. It's got uh, you know everything that you need to see and. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd be pretty, pretty surprised. I think, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised once this whole thing is over and I get to finally put my story out there. Cause that's one thing that I haven't done. I know other people are putting their stories out there, what they think on their side, but I haven't. And, and, and I'm just well, doing good, that because, you know, no one ever wishes they responded sooner. Yeah. It's good to wait until it's all out there and you can explain the full story with nobody, you know, 
messing with yeah because if I, if I explain it right because if I make a video now it's like people are just gonna still think of the same thing and and you know I just want to make sure that things are done and it's been eight years of legal this and legal that I think it's a half a million dollars in legal fees now it's it's and you know what as you know what's really funny out of all this Holly and I uh, or my brother we have not asked for legal funds we haven't had a GoFundMe we haven't we've done it all ourselves we have we have just you know, we, we're just not that. We just don't want to ask, you know, for, for other people's money or for other people's help. We're we're serious on just taking care of this, and, and hopefully we put it behind us. Yeah, sounds great. All right, man. Well, we're going to kick you out to take in another caller, but thanks for coming in. The storm right, was definitely it. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, I appreciate you, man. Take care. Bye. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> I think he, I, he, had a good, he had a good perspective. He had a lot. Brandon's looking mighty dark. <laughs>